Well, good morning, guys. It's Pastor Andy. Today's June the 30th, and we're looking at Psalm chapter 112. Psalm 112 goes along with what we talked about yesterday, Psalm 111. In fact, it picks up right where we left off. Verse 1 of Psalm 112 says, Praise the Lord, how joyful are those who fear the Lord. He starts right off talking about the fear of the Lord, this psalmist does, just as they did at the end of Psalm 111. Today's psalm goes through this, this description of the fulfillment that a believer gets in his relationship with life. This is how we can get along in the relationships that are around us every day. This is how I survive those relationships. This describes those relationships. The first one talks about my relationship to the Lord. He says, praise the Lord. And we're supposed to fear the Lord and delight in obeying his commands. We should be happy in obeying God. That's where our joy should come from. It comes from my relationship with him, not the circumstances that go around me, because circumstances change day to day. People change day to day. My feelings change day to day. So I can't trust my feelings. What do I feel like today? Uh, I feel like pizza today. I feel like tacos tomorrow. I feel like the, you know our feelings change day to day from the food that we eat to the relationships that we have to the things that we feel like doing or feel like wearing or all these things, they change. But what doesn't change? My relationship with the Lord. That's where my joy should come from. That's where my happiness, my real happiness, my real joy, who I am at my core being, shouldn't be controlled by others. I should never give that kind of power to anybody else but God that can affect my joy and my happiness. So he starts off with our relationship with the Lord. Then he talks about our relationship with material wealth. And man, that's one that hangs us up. We struggle with money. Did you know that the Bible talks more about money than any other subject? That's a tough one. But if a preacher talks about money, then that's a bad thing because all he wants, nah, I don't want anybody's money. I don't care what you do with your money. I just want God's blessing on your life. God will take care of his church. God takes care of me. God takes care of all this stuff. He doesn't need any of us, but he allows us to be a part of his plan. And in here, he describes what our relationship with money and material wealth should be. Look at verse three. They themselves will be wealthy and their good deeds will last forever. Verse five. Good comes from, to those who lend money generously and conduct their business fairly. We are to be generous and to be giving. I love what he says in verse 4. Light shines in the darkness for the godly. They are generous, compassionate, and righteous. Man, when I'm walking right with God, it's like a light in the darkness. I'm able to see things sometimes that others can't see. That's that discernment that comes from the Holy Spirit when he leads me. Some people may not understand that, but when the Holy Spirit is inside of us and we are living in right relationship with God, he will give us those warnings to watch out for some things, the clear go ahead for other things. He is the one who gives us that wisdom. It's like a light shining in the darkness. And he gives that to us because we're generous people. We should be people who are marked by generosity, not looking for what we can get, but looking for what we can give because it's not about us and what we can get. Some people live their whole life to get what they can, can what they get, and sit on the can. But that's not the way we should live our life. We should be living our life with open hands, giving to others because none of this belongs to us anyways. Everything belongs to God. So as a believer, I am supposed to have a relationship with wealth. I'm supposed to be generous. I'm supposed to be giving. Then he talks about relationships with our circumstances. Um, in verse 6, such people will not be overcome by evil. Those who are righteous will be long remembered. They do not fear bad news. Wow, they don't fear bad news? Have you ever just been afraid that somebody was going to tell you something that you didn't want to hear? That bad news was coming? They don't fear. People who walk close to God don't fear bad news. They confidently trust in the Lord to care for them. What a great way to live life. I love the next verse, verse 8. They are confident and fearless, and they can face their foes triumphantly. That's the way I want to live my life. Confident and fearless, knowing that I am following God. It's not me making decisions. It's me following what he's already decided for me. And then it finishes up with my relationship with the wicked. Verse 10, the wicked will see this and be infuriated. They will grind their teeth in anger and they will sink away their hopes thwarted. You know, I can't worry about what's happening in the lives of other people. 
I can't worry about the wicked people or what other people are doing or if they're living their life in a certain way. I got my hands full with me. I need to take care of me. I need to make sure I'm the one who's walking right. I need to make sure that I am living the kind of life that I'm supposed to live, that I've got the right relationship with the Lord. I've got the right relationship with wealth, that I've got the right relationship with those around me because I've got enough to worry about here. My hands are full with me, let alone trying to add anybody else to that equation. So instead of looking at the moat that's in my brother's eye, I need to take care of the beam that's in my own eye and make sure that I am the one who is walking uprightly and walking with the Lord and following after him. I hope that you'll do that today and you'll get into this psalm and read what God has for you and see what it is that God wants to talk to you about today. And until tomorrow, God bless you. Have a great day.